G'day, I'm Dr. Paul Mason. On Tuesday Just Gone, several newspapers around the country published an opinion piece by my good friend and 2020 Australian of the Year, Dr. James Mukey. It defended red meat from both a health and environmental perspective, addressing several false claims commonly used to demonise red meat. James pointed out that there is, in fact, no compelling evidence that reducing red meat offers any health benefit. The claims that red meat is unhealthy are largely based on what we call junk science, typically using poor quality research known as nutritional epidemiology, which every scientist worth their salt knows is terribly limited in what it can tell us. James also attacked some of the environmental and ethical claims made against red meat. He points out that 97% of agricultural land in Australia is simply too rocky, steep or arid to grow crops, which makes claims that cattle are monopolising agricultural land in Australia laughable. The fact is, without livestock, 97% of the agricultural land in Australia would go to waste. 97%. So much for food security. The fact is, everything James said in his article was based on fact, and equally important, it was being shared with the Australian public. Which makes it somewhat unfortunate that two days later, on Thursday the 5th of September, one of Australia's largest media companies, Fairfax Media, published an article nationally claiming harm from low-carbohydrate diets. That it came so soon after the publication of James' opinion piece, in my view, is unfortunate. Some other doctors I've spoken to even interpret this as being some sort of a rebuttal. The problem is, while James cited concrete scientific fact, this latter article was wholly based on junk science. It was titled, Low Carb, High Fat Diets for Weight Loss Actually Boost Risk of Type 2 Diabetes. In short, this headline implies that low carb, high fat diets can cause diabetes. And that is simply wrong. I hope this was an editing error by a journalist or a media person who wrote the article and not written by one of the study authors. For to claim causality when it is not supported by evidence would basically amount to academic misconduct. The point is, the methodology of this study means that it cannot, and I repeat, cannot demonstrate whether or not changes in the diet influence the development of diabetes. The claim in the article's headline is manifestly false and misleading which is why a number of my medical and scientific colleagues and I are calling for it to be retracted. Now, putting this deceptive headline to one side, it is also a fact that based on the study's data, any suggestion that the low-carb, high-fat diet was associated, not caused by but merely associated with diabetes, is most likely explained by random chance. Hardly something to hang your hat on in the national media. You see. The rate of diabetes in the study subjects who were followed for about 14 years was similar enough between those with high and low carbohydrate intakes that they did not reach what is known as statistical significance. That is, the results were so underwhelming that they could not be distinguished from random chance. There is also the inconvenient fact that this study didn't even look at low carb diets despite being prominently advertised in the article headline. Generally speaking, even relaxed low-carb diets will have an intake of carbohydrates, which is less than 30% of total energy. The thing is, of the five arbitrary groups within this study, those with the lowest carbohydrate intake were still consuming, on average, 37.5% carbs. How can research studying ostensibly high-carb diets then turn around and make a claim about low-carb diets? Could you even make this up? And then we come to the elephant in the room, seed oils. You see, even if we accept the thrust of this article that low-carb, high-fat diets caused an increase in diabetes, we still face a question of whether or not it was the carbs or the fat. And the fact is, the vast majority of the increase in fat consumption in this study was not saturated, which means it was almost certainly due to seed oils. 
Seed oil consumption was almost certainly the dominant factor explaining differences in fat consumption in this diet. And it is my personal belief that these seed oils, when consumed in high enough doses, can be even more problematic than sugar and carbs in the diet. So there you have it. Just two days after an important article educating the public about the demonization of red meat, an article published on research some months old just happened to be published, which completely misrepresented the science. Claims were made about low-carb diets causing diabetes that was not supported by either the methodology of the study or the results and data within the study itself. The assertions being made were even more compromised by the fact that it was a study of higher carb diets and not low carb diets. And it ignored the elephant in the room, completely ignored the elephant in the room of seed oils. If nothing else, this should make us even more vigilant about avoiding these plant-based oils. Stay well, everyone.